it's a great pleasure to welcome Professor Ian Hargreaves. Would you give him a round of applause, please? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't uh, know when I was asked to do this uh, today uh, that I'd be following Ian Livingstone, and probably the organizers didn't know uh, that uh, Ian Livingstone and I went to the same school uh, on the edge of Manchester. Uh, and I couldn't help recalling as Ian unfolded the treasures of his knowledge uh, before us this morning, uh, what he once told me uh, our head teacher had said to him at a sort of cr critical point of his career at the school, uh, namely, why didn't he consider working in a garage? He thought his head would look very well beneath the bonnet of the head teacher's car. Uh, so uh, maybe that explains a little bit some of the, uh, uh, some of the energy uh, in what Ian has to say about education. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the creative economy uh, of Wales, uh, and I'm going to uh, do it with reference as a starting point to this, uh, this is a report that I was asked to do uh, by uh, the Welsh Government in 2009. Uh, and um, I, when I dug it back out the other day, here's the hard copy of it, I thought, why is it black? Uh, and uh, I couldn't remember, and I'm sure this isn't the reason it was black, but perhaps it's the reason why I thought, well, yeah, black's okay. Um, uh, the Beat Poets, uh, they did black, um, and uh, so why not? And if you don't know who the Beat Poets are, as probably almost nobody does, he is uh, probably the best known of them, uh, the late Allen Ginsberg, uh, looking uh, very Beat poety. Um, and I was very pleased to, uh, you know, just flicking through all of this, to be reminded of this, uh, this poem that he wrote called Europe, Europe. America hides mad meat in refrigerator Britain. Um, I thought that was quite a stimulating line in various ways. At the time uh, I was asked to do this review of creative industries in Wales, I was working uh, for this other milliband. Uh, and uh, uh, he was a little bit puzzled why I wanted to take a day a week off from trying to solve tensions with Russia uh, or um, uh, looking for the next step forward in climate change. Uh, but he eventually, he agreed I could do it, which was very nice, nice of him. And we produced a report. Uh, I worked closely on it uh, with Natasha Hale, who uh, is now uh, a senior civil servant in uh, the business department of the Welsh government and is responsible within that for creative industries. But here, here are the, the, the key points that, uh, that we made, or I made. It was my, I take responsibility for this, it's, uh, of course, all of it. Uh, but, um, so, uh, number one was the big one. Uh, it was surprisingly uh, not um, accepted to anywhere near a sufficient degree at that point that everything about the creative industry's future was going to be digital. The fact that we are uh, all here today uh, is an indication that things have happened. Uh, I'd gone on a lot when I first came to work in Wales uh, at the, just before the turn of the millennium, uh, when uh, I, I tried to persuade people to declare the year 2000 in Wales, the year of worldwide Wales, uh, but that got nowhere. It wasn't a particularly, uh, it was a pretty crap idea, really. But, um, but uh, you know, there we are. Um, uh, point two here is simply to point out that uh, uh, there's plenty of research that um, uh, makes us sure that growth rates in the creative industries uh, are strong, uh, not only in Wales, in the UK generally, uh, and therefore you can justify some prioritisation uh, of this sector. Uh, that um, uh, I, at the time uh, it seemed to me that uh, although film is hugely important in the creative industries that the funding support was arranged a bit too much around film and it wasn't really addressing at all digital media as such 
uh, and I felt also that it didn't sufficiently um, address uh, the need uh, economically for exports. Um, we, we talked about uh, policy advice from specialists and um, hugely important point, point five, I'll come back to it, collecting and publishing relevant data. One of the things you learn if you work uh, in government, which I did a little, around government, which is a journalist I did a lot, that if you can't count something, nobody in politics will take it seriously. Uh, you have to be able to count it. Even where it appears uncountable, you have to do it. Um, the arts-creative industries relationship, uh, well, there's more to say about that. I'll come back to that. Uh, that uh, remains a little controversial. It was certainly controversial then. People from the arts world tend to be a bit suspicious of the commerciality of the creative industries. Uh, and you know, that um, perception can work in reverse in a negative way if you're not careful. The reference to Whitehall then, point seven, Digital Britain was the big um, UK government thing of the time when we were doing the review. It had been uh, sparked off uh, by uh, Gordon Brown when he was Chancellor uh, and continued by him when he became Prime Minister. And it was a big, a little bit top-down, a bit technocratic, you could argue, uh, but it was, uh, it, was, it was intended to be a bold stroke on digital and had, I think, much to commend it. Um, and then there's you know, the massively obvious point about digital infrastructure, in Wales' case, needing to work with a scattered population, uh, not a population uh, that can be taken care of only by attending to cities, vital though cities are. Uh, and then, uh, well, I can't match Ian Livingstone's eloquence on point nine, uh, digital skills, we're doing a panel this afternoon, which we'll be able to discuss that. Uh, and finally, a reference to the, the public service broadcasters there. Uh, they were, um, back then, they loomed even larger in the landscape relatively than they do now, uh, but they remain, I think, hugely important. And Ian also mentioned the BBC. Um, Jamie kindly mentioned um, the piece of work uh, on uh, the left there, uh, which is uh, the review I did of intellectual property. Uh, that's now five years old. It took nearly all of the five years uh, to get the recommendations through Parliament because they were controversial. Uh, but uh, it, I was surprised, really, how controversial they were, given how modest they are. Uh, they basically say, uh, let's try to make sure that the way that we design IP works in the digital age. Um, uh, the, the, the document on the right uh, is a piece of work I was doing with Nesta uh, around the time that Ian Livingston and Alex Hope were doing their work on Next Gen. Uh, I, I sort of went from thinking about intellectual property to thinking about what is, what is this creative economy? It had, been, it had emerged as a term, uh, but had not, I felt, been nailed down in terms of its meaning. Uh, and working with uh, the two same Nesta uh, people who worked on uh, NextGen uh, with Ian and Alex Hope, uh, we produced that. So I'm going to just go right there. What is the creative economy uh, as opposed to the creative industries? The creative economy is the part of the economy that uses creativity to, to, to get its value, to deliver its value. So the creative industry is a part of that, but they're not all of it. So there's creativity, uh, obviously, in the way you design cars or in the way that you uh, market anything. Uh, and the creative economy can be measured not by totting up a, um, a list of sectors, uh, it's measured by adding up the number of people who do creative jobs wherever they do them. And you see the key, the key data points there, that we're talking about um, getting on for 10% of the workforce, 2.5 million people. Um, we're talking about uh, roughly 10% of the value, gross value added in the economy. Uh, and actually, what we're seeing uh, over there on the left of that chart is that more creative people work outside the creative industries than inside the creative industries. 
uh, and with all of the implications uh, that, that arise from that. So, take this as an example. It's an appropriate one, uh, meeting as we are here in Newport. Uh, here is um, an insurance price comparison service which bills its brand and its competitive advantage around an opera singer. It finds itself uh, locked in battle with a rival service which builds its entire brand identity around Mia Cats, speaking about the Mia Kit. Uh, and uh, Go Compare uh, is uh, homegrown from here. Uh, this one is an imposter from East Anglia, Cambridge, Peterborough. Um, that makes the point. This is as much a part of the creative economy as this is. Or this is. So, uh, Nesta, which is very good at figures, um, uh, gener has generated a heat map which shows, relatively speaking, how strong the creative economy is uh, in different parts of the United Kingdom. So you see, uh, unsurprisingly, it's the, a very familiar story, uh, that the hottest place is London in the southeast, uh, and that uh, close by to there, it's pretty warm, uh, and then it's more uneven around the UK. Uh, you see that where we are meeting today uh, is tolerably warm. This is, this is not a cold spot, this is um, uh, a, a warm spot, but there are places very nearby to us in Wales that uh, are not very warm. Uh, it gets better as you go further north again, uh, but that's what we're dealing with. We're also dealing with this, uh, that the background economic conditions that we're talking about in this period, the creative industries get defined, invented really, in the late 1990s uh, by the then Blair government, uh, the creative economy emerges um, uh, in the, really the middle of the last decade as a term. Uh, and in this period, uh, Wales uh, achieves devolution, uh, which is uh, uh, an enormous success in all sorts of ways, including uh, its level of uh, appreciation and acceptance by the people of Wales who voted for it very narrowly. But the background economic uh, stuff is that Wales's relative economic uh, performance compared with the UK as a whole remains stable. Uh, this is not a terrible thing. Uh, there have been many plans ambitious to improve Wales's relative standing. It hasn't got worse, but it hasn't got better. Uh, and of course, there's then a big recession. Uh, here's a, a chart uh, uh, created by my colleague from Cardiff University, R Rob Huggins, which shows uh, a regional innovation index uh, for uh, 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 different regions. And you see that Wales there, too, is um, actually, they're quite bunched, really, most of those. There are a couple of outliers at the top, uh, and there's an outlier uh, at the bottom. Uh, but Wales is um, uh, going to have to try very hard uh, to get uh, to a leadership position. And this is Rob's um, uh, own heat map version of the thing across Europe, where uh, the green, uh, the, the strong, bright green uh, places are the innovation leaders, and the light green are next in line, uh, the innovation followers, but stronger than uh, the yellows and the oranges. And again, we see Wales, there, kind of on the shoulder uh, of uh, the best, uh, but on the shoulder, not ahead or level with. So if we come back to the heart of the heart of digital Wales, um, uh, yeah, the argument of the heart of digital Wales in total being um, uh, digital is going to be massively important across every aspect of life. That was very, very obvious to everybody in this room, including me, uh, by uh, the time uh, we, I wrote this. Uh, but it, um, it was not... Uh, the, the heart of it, the kind of the creative beating heart of it, 
um, was going to be in uh, these creative industries and their spillover effects uh, into, uh, into other businesses. So I've done uh, a probably rather harsh uh, four-star marking system uh, on how I think uh, we're doing. This is all highly debatable. I could, uh, I could ch change these around uh, w without uh, too much difficulty. But has Wales got digital? Well, I think the fact that uh, uh, this kind of event is happening, along with many other things, I think we can give ourselves a couple of stars and, uh, you know, be... I think where Wales overall is, um, uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing a lot of things right, we're doing quite well, uh, but we better not think that this is going to be easy. We're going to have to keep aiming a step higher. Um, the, uh, the fact that, that uh, this, this sector, the creative industry sector, justifies priority invention, that's been agreed and is happening. Uh, that's a, a solid part of, uh, of what the government is doing, and so that's pretty good too. Um, that uh, funding support should move towards more towards digital, that has happened. Uh, I think that you could say, uh, you could question whether it's happened to the extent that it might have done, but it's definitely happened. It's moving in that direction. And in policy areas, the most important thing is always the direction of travel. Uh, and it's moving uh, in the right way. Um, advice from specialists, the government has taken that up across uh, all sectors, really. It's now become routine that there is built-in specialist uh, advice that exists in the creative industries. Uh, it can, we could we could discuss that further. Uh, I'm making there on point five, uh, I'll, I won't go through it again, but the point about data, I think that the, uh, there is not uh, uh, the quality of data that we need uh, in the Welsh uh, creative economy uh, in order for us to be able to do all of the thinking in a well-based manner. Uh, the arts creative industries relationship, I put a star and a question mark there because Wales has done something in the last year which is very controversial uh, and unusual. Uh, it has moved uh, responsibility for the arts into the business department, a move which is uh, very uh, uh, strongly suspected by many people in the arts. It's way too early to say uh, uh, whether this is uh, going to prove to be a good thing or not, but certainly that relationship between the arts and the creative industries, creative economy is crucial. They're working well with Whitehall, well, you've seen since the election on May the 7th, uh, the government in London has decided to move all its digital stuff to the Department of Culture, Media and Sport from the business department. Uh, so there's another shuffling of the chairs going on about that in London. Way too early to know what that is going to lead to. Competitive digital infrastructure. Uh, Wales has got, I think, a reasonable story to tell uh, about digital infrastructure, a good story in some places, but anybody who spends any time in rural Wales knows how difficult it is to actually run a digital business from many places in rural Wales uh, on, based on the sustainability and speed uh, of the connectivity that you can get there. Uh, let's hope that we're going to continue improving that. Uh, digital skills, enormously important. I think a lot has happened in Wales. I think Creative Skillset Wales has done lots on um, kite marking, uh, on um, uh, continuous professional development, on apprenticeships. Uh, but the scale of the challenge that Ian Livingstone uh, outlined, about which I have to say I agree with him, uh, has not been really picked up uh, across the board, anywhere in the UK, uh, including in Wales. Um, the uh, point 10, well, uh, what's all that been about? That, uh, th there was, there's been lots of contest about where the BBC is going to be headquartered, uh, uh, how it relates to the digital community, how it re relates to the independent production sector. I think that all of that has evolved in ways which are positive. Uh, and I think it will be very nice indeed to welcome uh, BBC Wales to the centre of Cardiff uh, when uh, assuming that the move, which I think is more or less agreed, goes ahead. Um, so th this is what the Welsh Government says it's spending. 
uh, these are um, substantial numbers uh, and represent uh, serious activity. Uh, we could debate them. Um, and uh, here is an example uh, of something that uh, the Welsh government's funding, uh, which has included uh, attracting Pinewood Studios to a site in Cardiff uh, and uh, includes uh, a much more effective outreach than Wales used to have to what you might call high-end international television, especially American television. Uh, and uh, that text there is just telling you uh, the story of uh, uh, the new Kurt Sutter uh, venture, which is called The Bastard Execution and which is being filmed in Wales. Um, the, the, the creative economy uh, general facts uh, about Wales, um, I've said that I don't think we've got all the data that we need, but we do have a sort of, we, we do have some data, uh, and th these points show some of the data that we have. Um, uh, nobody to whom I asked the question, uh, here are the six economic priority sectors, tell me which you think has got the highest weekly earnings rate. Uh, uh, people I ask that question to tend to say, oh, biosciences, um, that must be top. It's not true. Uh, creative industries is top uh, by that measure. Uh, on business births versus deaths, uh, creative industries are doing quite well. Um, uh, those are some numbers there. These numbers are always, you know, a little bit uh, um, hard to see through, uh, but uh, they're, they're the kind of numbers uh, that, that get produced. Uh, and the crucial one in terms of where we are not yet is the bottom one. Uh, when I said that Wales has failed to close uh, the prosperity gap, the economic prosperity gap with the rest of the UK uh, in recent years, it's also true uh, that Europe uh, is failing to uh, close its competitiveness gap with other parts of the world, notably North America, uh, China and other parts of Asia. Uh, and uh, you, you, you will hear increasingly, you hear it in uh, the Chancellor's speeches, uh, you hear it in what the Bank of England says about the economy. Nobody can quite explain why productivity is so stagnant. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it in uh, detail today. It's, uh, it gets a bit too involved. But uh, my own instinct, and I'm not an economist, so it's not an authoritative statement, uh, is that the creative economy uh, 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 contains within it uh, quite a lot of what will help us address uh, the productivity problem, because productivity is, is registered as being very low uh, in the creative industries. And I think there's something wrong uh, going on with the way that we think about that. Here are some other things to be very encouraged about, about the digital creative economy in Wales. Uh, these, this list of, uh, of data points simply says there are all sorts of ways in which you could say uh, Wales is different from the rest of the UK. House prices, uh, the education system, um, uh, the way the NHS is run. But when you look at these kind of figures, Wales isn't an outlier. Wales is not in any sense um, not doing digital. Um, and the uh, uh, energy that's around it is growing. Uh, and you see that in the Ofcom statistics as well, uh, where uh, the numbers for Wales are uh, uh, absolutely uh, what you would uh, um, uh, expect and like them to be. There's nothing uh, that's going wrong there. Now, what, what however, uh, do, we, do we need to do more of? Uh, this is uh, probably... Uh, well, one of my favorite bits that comes out of the Nesta Creative Economy Manifesto, which I referred to earlier. Uh, it, it takes the point that uh, creative economies work best in places where you've got tight and well-connected networks of people 
uh, who uh, have got overlapping interests and skills, so skills that apply in this sector and that sector and that sector, uh, and where uh, you've got a benign environment on things like uh, tech, tech infrastructure uh, and availability of skills. Um, classically, of course, these conditions arise in cities. Uh, one of Wales's challenges is to get uh, this approach to work uh, in cities and much wider regions. So the whole M4 corridor, for example, but also m biggest challenge of all to get it to work across the rural economy as well. And these are, uh, these are the points that we thought had stood out from all of the very large mass of academic work that's been done on creative clusters, which is uh, you have to work out what's right for your situation. So it can't all be sort of determined from some top level, some national policy level. You have to work to get the data and then use it. Uh, that uh, happens surprisingly unoften in my experience. Uh, you have to think systematically about it but you have to listen, you have to work, you have to co-create. If you are the policy uh, uh, operation or the big institution, like the BBC or like uh, my university or like uh, a very big corporation, uh, you're not going to get an effective creative cluster relationship uh, by uh, telling people what to do and not listening to exactly what it looks like from their point of view. And if you do those things, uh, you will succeed in raising visibility and strengthening networks. And that will primarily happen as a result of the connections between people rather than through uh, the planting of buildings. When I was in Shanghai recently, somebody told me that there were over 200 creative clusters in Shanghai alone uh, and that the government had uh, put them there. Uh, and uh, China's creative economy actually is a thing of some wonder, but I think we can pretty much guarantee that creative clusters mandated by uh, the Chinese government are not likely to be the source of its dynamic. Uh, and there's the point about big institutions at the bottom. So it made me think, maybe, maybe I should have read more Allen Ginsberg. Uh, maybe I should have... You know, maybe, maybe it wasn't an accident that this uh, looked like this. Because uh, what Ginsburg uh, is, uh, I don't know what he, what, what he stands for. I mean, it's interesting that uh, Ian mentioned the relationship between poetry and coding skills. Uh, this is about being able to invent something with nothing else in the room other than yourself and your brain. In Ginsburg's case, your considerably chemically uh, uh, enhanced brain. Uh, but, uh, so I, you know, I offer the late Allen Ginsberg as a wholly out of time patron saint uh, of the creative economy. Um, and so what are we doing finally uh, about this? What kind of work are we, uh, am I up to, are we up to? Well, we are rather quietly at the moment working on a creative economy project for Cardiff, uh, which uh, is very much um, uh, intended to work on a DIY basis. Uh, and uh, it's happening uh, uh, with a small team uh, in, uh, inside the university, Alice Taylor is uh, sitting over here, uh, uh, and she's part of that team. Um, and uh, we are uh, noting uh, these encouraging background factors of the kind that uh, are referred to there. Uh, we are noting, I think that Neil Cocker is uh, in the room somewhere, uh, uh, who Neil started Cardiff Start. We're noti noti noting uh, the healthy growth climate for startups in Cardiff. Uh, and uh, we are saying to ourselves at the university, how can we better open the walls of the university to collaborate in a way that is really of interest to business? Uh, this has been very normal, absolutely normal and routine in engineering 
uh, in pharmaceuticals. It has not been normal and routine in the arts and humanities. Uh, uh, it's been pretty, it's been somewhere in the middle with social sciences. So we are trying to move our own game inside the university and we're trying to do it in a way uh, that works. So this is, uh, just to close now, I've just got a few pictures of uh, um, things that are going on in what, uh, in the creative economy. Um, this is a project uh, involving a games company called Slingshot, uh, which um, uh, a colleague of mine at the university who is an expert in Gothic literature uh, worked on uh, with the games company through a project called React, which is a creative economy knowledge exchange project based in Bristol, uh, but reaching out into Cardiff as well as uh, down to Exeter. Uh, and uh, the, the next big collaboration of, of um, uh, or the, the, the next manifestation of this collaboration will be the um, sighting in Cardiff of uh, uh, a street game uh, or an immersive game called Hyde, as in Jekyll and Hyde. Um, so the, the game scene, which when I was writing this report, um, was actually quite hard to find at all. Uh, in Wales, you did find that you did find people. Of course, you found people working alone, but you did not find uh, them uh, associating well together. There was not a strong network, uh, and this is something that's happened. The government has helped this to happen. Well done, government! But the people who've made it happen are the games developers, uh, and uh, there are there's now plenty around uh, that um, makes you able to justify uh, the point that uh, Ian Livingstone also made, that uh, this part of the world now uh, has definitely got a place. And then, elsewhere in the creative economy, you can go on all day with these, uh, but there are just fantastic uh, entrepreneurial things that have happened and are happening. Uh, here's the choir uh, that uh, had its moment uh, in Simon Cowell land, uh, but is a hugely um, successful uh, creative enterprise. Uh, here is uh, Kafili based, uh, also rather wonderful, its story. Uh, I don't know whether uh, Gareth is here today, but its story is also fantastic. I mean, it's a, it's a tech, office sharing, collaboration seeking um, thing that's just emerged from the community there uh, and is uh, very, very impressive. Uh, closer, to, closer to my home in, uh, in Cardiff is, uh, I mean, Made in Roth uh, is, uh, is, a, is a, a, great, a great little um, affair that goes on uh, in that part of Cardiff and uh, they make things, they do things. Uh, of course, it's not just Cardiff, it's everywhere uh, and um, Swansea, uh, the, the tech hub in Swansea is uh, doing very well. Uh, uh, here's something else that came out of Caerphilly, which attracted um, uh, public finance. And this is, this is my favorite one, because uh, I've made the mistake of putting the caption on there, so you know what it is. Uh, but if I had not put the caption on there and said, what do you think this is? Uh, you might have said, well, it's a really fancy hotel. Uh, or a, you know, a nightclub or something like that. It's actually the Bioscience Hub uh, down in Cardiff Bay. And um, a couple of weeks ago, there was an event down in Swansea that Sir Chris Evans, who's very, uh, the, 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 the brilliant entrepreneur who's very associated with the Bioscience Hub. And he said he wanted it to be even, you know, even kind of crazier and uh, more uh, uh, distinctive. Uh, this place. So even when you are thinking biosciences at the kind of leading point of finding the new, um, uh, these creative values matter. And of course, they matter in a much more significant way when you go right into the science. As Ian argued to us this morning, um, the kind of discovery, trial and error, problem solving uh, that science relies on uh, is exactly 
the same kind of trial and error problem solving that Allen Ginsberg uh, relied on. Uh, you can't uh, talk about the creative economy uh, in South Wales without referring to Doctor Who. So our project um, is, uh, will emerge uh, more publicly this autumn. Uh, we uh, intend it to be, uh, depending on what we learn from the very, very detailed conversations that we're now having with creative economy people uh, in the Cardiff area, uh, we intend it to be uh, a well-designed enhancement of the network intensity of Cardiff's creative economy. Uh, and we intend uh, to uh, create with partners from business and uh, the cultural sector, we intend to create a physical hub, a place uh, where uh, startups and um, will be able to operate uh, and where uh, people who work in universities and people who don't work in universities will be able to interact and uh, identify, grow and develop great ideas. Uh, what this will lead to, uh, only time will tell. Uh, but it's very much uh, in the spirit of uh, collaborate to creative enhancement. Uh, and um, that is all I've got to say to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>